Right, so let's carry on. We've got about 11 minutes left, so let's make this count. The next question, question six, seven, and eight. Note there are now changes to the information. Use this new information to answer questions six, seven, and eight. I don't think we are going to be able to do any more. So let's see whether we can get through these questions and obviously focus on the new table given. Right, so once again, 2019, 2020, what is the additional info? I've got gross profit on sales. I've got gross profit on markup, or rather, I should say gross profit on cost of sales, net asset value per share, earnings per share, dividends per share, market value, and return on shareholders' equity. So they're giving me now profitability and return ratios. Remember, profitability, the focus is obviously on profit, income, expenses, gross profit, net profit, whereas returns, the focus is on dividends, earnings, your share price, your uh, net asset value of your shares, and so on. Right, so let's look at our first question. The business failed to achieve their target markup. Quote, relevant indicator or indicators showing that this was the case for one mark. Now, if we go back to the very first slide, right, let me do that quickly because I think that's important, where we were looking at the information regarding the business, they told us in the info that the business uses a constant markup of 100%. So there's that 100%. So remember, that's your target markup. So did the business achieve their target markup? Right, let's go back to the question. Right, the business failed to achieve their target markup. They're not asking us, did the business achieve their target markup? They're telling us they didn't achieve it. They failed to achieve their target markup. Quote, a relevant indicator showing that this was the case. Okay, so my target markup is 100%, but my actual markup achieved, so your actual markup that was achieved Let's go to the new table, right? Gross profit on cost of sales, 2020, 95%. Okay, so clearly we can see that the markup of 100% was not achieved. The actual markup achieved was 95%, not the 100%. In other words, they didn't achieve that target markup. So that question, quite simple, quite straightforward. Please remember, guys, you are focusing on the markup. Okay, right. The next question, provide one reason why the business did not achieve their markup. So remember, guys, even though the target markup is 100%, during the year, the business may have sales where they're giving their customers discounts. Sometimes errors could take place. Sometimes stock is stolen. As a result, you are then not achieving that markup. So just think, we're almost at the end of winter it's obviously we're going into spring, you're going to want to buy ice creams, you're going to want to buy uh, cool drinks, juices and so on, um, items that are more uh, suitable for the weather. So obviously, in order to lure customers into their shop, they're going to reduce prices of those products. So instead of allocating a markup of 100%, that markup is going to be reduced. Okay, so one reason you could mention sales, you could mention customer discounts, okay, that could be given to shoppers, to your customers. There could be errors sometimes made at the point of sale. So for example, I take the item and um, the cashier scans the item and by mistake, um, she enters the wrong barcode or whatever the case may be. So there could be errors made at the point of sale. And remember, if there's theft, obviously, your markup then will not be achieved. Okay, right, let's move on to the next question. I'm just looking at the time. We still have time, right? So the next question, 
the business's stock turnover rate increased from 6.5 times per year. I think I missed a question. I just want to go back. There we go. Question nine. This one is important, guys. Um, let's do this question because I think this is something you battle with slightly more than question 10. So question nine, is the business, business retaining sufficient profits? Explain in detail by referring to relevant financial indicators and by providing a calculation to motivate your answer. Right, so what are we referring to? Retaining sufficient profits. Obviously, the question is referring to retained income. So remember, earnings per share, okay, indicates the maximum I can give my shareholders as dividends. And obviously, dividends per share, what I've actually given my shareholders. So often, your company would want to retain profits. In other words, if my earnings per share is 100 cents, I might want to give my shareholders 80 cents and I want to retain the balance. Why is retaining profits important? Because obviously as a business, you would like to expand, you would like to grow, you would also like to increase the net asset value of your shares. So remember, those are the reasons why a company would want to retain profits. Right, so here they are asking us, is the business retaining sufficient profits? So the two ratios that's going to tell us whether or not this is happening is our earnings per share, EPS, and dividends per share, DPS. So let's go back to the table. Okay, so we're obviously looking at um, earnings per share. Let's start with 2019. So my earnings per share... 134 cents, whereas dividends per share is 137 cents. So let's first fill that in and then we'll interpret. So earnings per share, 134 cents, whereas dividends per share is 137 cents. Now we can clearly see in 2019, your profit or your EPS, 134 cents, the total profit was paid out as dividends. In fact, they paid a much higher dividend in comparison to the earnings per share. Now, how is that possible? Okay, think about it for a second, guys. How is it possible that my DPS could be higher than my EPS? The business is basically using previous year's retained income. So remember, retained income accumulates. That is why it's also called accumulated profits. It accumulates over time. So what the business is basically doing is they are using previous year's retained earnings or retained income, and that is why the dividend per share is higher than the earnings per share. So we can clearly see in 2019, they did not retain right? They did not retain any profits. In fact, they used previous profits that they retained to pay out a bigger dividend. Okay. Now, remember, a business could do that for various reasons. You may not pay a dividend for a few years, and then after three years, four years, you're then giving your shareholders a much larger share of the profit. Right, so let's now look at 2019, or we looked at 2019, let's look at 2020. Was that the case in 2020? So let's go back to the table. I've just got over two minutes. I should be able to finish. So earnings per share, 155 cents in 2020, and your dividends per share, 120 cents. So let's just quickly write that down, and then we will comment. So EPS in 2020 was sitting at 155 cents and your dividend per share DPS at 120 cents. So we can clearly see that the business did retain 35 cents, okay? Or if you want to, you can obviously calculate because the question does want you to calculate. So let's try and do that quickly. 
right? So if we take the 35 cents that they're retaining divided by 155 cents, the business is retaining 23%, okay? So if we just times that by 100, obviously, or your percentage sign, we are getting the 23%, 22,5, or let's just round that to 23%. So in 2020, the business is retaining 23%. Now, remember, guys, you can discuss whether or not they are retaining sufficient profits. You could say yes, right? Because obviously, in 2019, they didn't retain any, whereas in 2020, they are retaining 23%. So you could obviously say yes, they are retaining sufficient profits in 2020 compared to uh, the previous financial year, or you could say no. But remember, you've got to substantiate. Okay, I don't think we have time to move on now to the next question, guys. So just again, some quick tips when you are commenting, Think about your comments before you write down your comments. Look at the ratio, look at the information given, ask yourself exactly what does the question want me to discuss? What does the question want me to comment on? Very, very important. We often find when students comment, they basically continue writing, they're commenting on absolutely everything, but not answering the question. So make sure you read your questions very, very carefully. Okay, my time is now up. So guys, if you are writing prelims from me, Mahesh Lal, Good luck for prelims, study, practice, and I'm sure you're going to get that A in accounting. I'll see you guys next week.